Indiana in the Morning, presented by First Commonwealth Bank on WCCS 101.1 FM and AM 1160. And it's time now for our interview segment, presented by Marcus and Mack, a law firm representing injured people. So we've been seeing a lot of supply chain issues ever since the COVID-19 pandemic hit, whenever shortages were seen on grocery shelves. But also, after the pandemic, uh, we'll say, eased up and restaurants started to open up, we also saw some supply shortages for the service industry. So joining us right now is a supply chain expert and a senior partner at Headstorm, and he has a wide range of expertise with shipping and the trucking industry. This is Rob Kelly joining us on the phone this morning. And Rob, how are things where you are this morning? Well, pretty good. I'm actually uh, sitting at the port of uh, Long Beach in Long Beach, California. So we're, we're here on the ground trying to uh, see if we can't help with some of these supply chain issues. So what has been the cause of it all? Has the COVID-19 pandemic been, really been that uh, significant to it, or are there other factors at play? Uh, both. I, it, COVID certainly uh, drove a number of not only short-term issues, uh, but the, it forced companies to kind of rethink about how their supply chains are set up and uh, making some structural changes to that. And so um, in terms of the short-term issues created by COVID, we're nearly complete with those. We, we did have some issues uh, with COVID in China in the spring, if you recall. Um, they had lockdowns. Um, that's over, but now companies are trying to catch up. So that's creating a little more congestion uh, in, in the ports. Uh, and in the, the supply chains in the United States, that will take a few more months, but hopefully by the end of the year, first quarter of next year, will that, that will be mostly unwound. Um, so that's one of the things we're looking at right now. So you're looking at probably later this, late this year, early next year is probably a time to, uh, see, for everything to calm down. But are there things now that are, because we're seeing kind of random uh, shortages, the one that I thought of uh, the most was actually, a lot of places were either starting to charge more or say, hey, we're out of chicken for our chicken dishes. Is there anything along those lines that we're seeing now, once again, coming to uh, uh, shortage levels? Yes. And, and, you know, some of that is kind of the cyclical challenges that we have in food production. Uh, what I mean by that is uh, there, there has been a drought in the western half of the United States uh, for almost, almost a year now. And that did uh, uh, hurt the production of certain crops. Some examples of that are some of the wheat-based uh, products uh, that has had some shortages. Uh, also in uh, the southwest U.S. and northern Mexico, uh, the chili pepper harvest was really low. Uh, so that affects things like hot sauces, salsas, um, sriracha sauce. If, mm -hmm. if people are fans of that particular product. They've had major production issues and supply chain issues with uh, getting their product out to market. So those are some of the specific things we're, that we're seeing. What can be done on the ground then to kind of ease the uh, log jam that's expected to come or to help get these shortages uh, back in supply? Well, uh, a couple months ago, the Biden administration uh, uh, came up with a promotion essentially to try to incentivize farmers to do what's called double cropping. Um, normally, you, you harvest a crop, you let the soil sit and kind of refertilize itself, and then you'll do another crop a few months later. Um, double cropping is where you harvest and then you immediately reseed to get another harvest. Um, some farmers are will do that. Some farmers don't like to do it because it it creates a lower production of the of the harvest. So um, we'll see um, if some farmers choose to do that, and in so uh, you know just how much production they get, and if that can cover you know some of these gaps that we're we're currently seeing. All right, Rob, thank you very much for joining us this morning on Indiana in the Morning. I know you're busy over in Long Beach, but uh, we hope that things continue to go well for you. And thanks again for joining us on our show. Thanks for having me. Have a great day. You too, sir. That was Rob Kelly with the uh, Headstorm, Headstorm, pardon me. He is a supply and chain expert and senior partner for that company. Joining us this morning on Indiana in the Morning, presented by First Commonwealth Bank. Our interview segments presented by Marcus and Mack, a law firm representing injured people. And it is